Immaculate Mary, your praises we sing. You reign now in splendor with Jesus our King. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Ave, Ave Maria. The name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My dear friends, we gather here today on a day that we remember the holy name of Mary. As we gather here today, as we honor once again our Blessed Mother, let us also recall the times that we have sinned. And now let us also beg the Lord for forgiveness. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, you have given your church the wonderful gift of the Blessed Virgin Mary a name that we should honor and respect, for she is the mother of God, the mother of your Son. And so, Lord, we ask you through her powerful intercession to grant us the grace and peace of becoming closer to your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, in giving this instruction, I do not praise the fact that your meetings are doing more harm than good. First of all, I hear that when you meet as a church, there are divisions among you. And to a degree, I believe it. There have to be factions among you in order that those who are approved among you may become known. When you meet in one place then, it is not to eat the Lord's Supper, for in eating each one goes ahead with his own supper, and one goes hungry while another gets drunk. Do you not have houses in which you can eat and drink? Or do you show contempt for the church of God and make those who have nothing feel ashamed? What can I say to you? Shall I praise you? In this matter, I do not praise you. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that for the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, after he had given thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, do this as often you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes again. Proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes again. It is written, in the written scroll it is prescribed for me to do your will, O my God, is my delight, and your law is within my heart. Proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes again. I announce your justice in the vast assembly. I did not restrain my lips as you, O Lord, know. Proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes again. May all who seek you exult and be glad in you. And may all who love your salvation say, say ever, the Lord be glorified. Proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes again. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had finished all his words to the peoples, he entered Capernaum. A centurion there had a slave who was ill and was about to die, and he was valuable to him. When he heard that Jesus heard about Jesus, he sent elders of the Jews to him, asking him to come and save the life of his slave. They approached Jesus and strongly urged him to come, saying, He deserves to have you do this for him, for he loves our nation, and he built the synagogue for us. And Jesus went with them. But he was only a short distance from the house. The centurion sent friends to him. Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you enter under my roof. Therefore, I did not consider myself worthy to come to you. But say the word and let my servant be healed. For I too am a person subject to authority and soldiers subject to me. And I say to one, go, and he goes. To another, come here, and he comes. To my slave, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him, and turning, said to the crowd following him, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. When the messengers returned to the house, they found the slave in good health. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We hear this beautiful story about the centurion, about someone who wasn't even of the Jewish faith, and yet knew that if a message could come to Jesus, his servant would or could be healed. And yet this man showed a tremendous amount of faith. For then he realized how unworthy he really was. And even to ask Jesus for a favor. And so he sent messengers to Jesus. And then he says this most beautiful thing, which I hope you know, we say these very words at Mass. Lord do not trouble yourself, for I am one worthy to have you enter my, under my roof. You know, in many ways we said, Lord, please don't come to my house. I'm not even worthy for you to walk into my house. My house. And isn't that what we say to one another, or we say to the Lord when we're about to receive him? Lord, I'm not worthy for you to enter under my roof. Then the powerful statement of faith. It is, but say the word, and my servant shall be healed. And what we say is, but save the world, and I shall be healed. It is in these statements that we make a profound realization of how unworthy we are to be in God's presence. And then that proud, profound statement of faith you know, just say the word and I shall be healed. Those are just very beautiful and powerful words and we should meditate upon them. And so today, the Lord invites us to be like the centurion, a person who realizes our sinfulness and then makes proud and profound statements of faith of how much we believe. Let us put our needs before God. We pray for the church throughout the world that she may preach the gospel with courage and conviction. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for our world leaders that they will find peaceful solutions to the world's conflicts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for those in our nation, that all may be a people who are dedicated to human life from the moment of conception till natural death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray today for the sick and the suffering, that they may be healed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who have died, that they may enter into heaven. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer for your needs, your intentions that we bring to the Lord today in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We now unite all of these prayers into one. We lift them up to God our Father, praying just as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you have already come. I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. In heaven the blessed your glory proclaim. On earth we, your children, invoke your fair name. Ave, 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 ma.